this is what my config normally looks like. And this is what the game normally looks like. I feel like it's close enough to default settings with a little more visual clarity. The HUD and hit sound combination is very clean in my mind. However, a lot of competitive players use a wide variety of setups, with some being so different from default that it is very jarring to see the difference, especially for newer players. The level of visual client-side customization available in this game is one of the few things I really enjoy about it compared to modern shooters. Most modern games give you the option of a few crosshair changes and occasionally a few other HUD elements, but that's about it. Another thing TF2 excels in compared to modern shooters is visual clarity, but you can actually improve that a lot over default settings. Here's an example of a few changes you can make to your config in TF2 to improve visual clarity. Let's start with a few small visual changes. Matt Fong and Matt Specular. These two commands alone make an immediate, very noticeable difference in how the environment and player models look and can improve visual clarity along with the minor FPS boost. Most people who have played TF2 for a long amount of time will find a combination of certain settings that they like best. Almost all competitive players either use min mode view models with varying view model FOV or just turn them off altogether. Having no view models in a game like TF2, with so many different weapons and items, would be very difficult for a new player to get used to, but once you've played the game for a while, it can really help clear up screen space by reducing the space taken by view models. The next thing competitive players like to change is the gamma. Higher in-game gamma makes the game look a lot worse, in my opinion, but gives way better visibility, especially in poorly lit areas of the map. Another thing that helps a lot with visibility is ragdolls. They quickly litter the map and have an effect on frame rate. I'll occasionally kill someone airborne and accidentally fire an extra shot at the ragdoll. However, a lot of the fun in a game like TF2 comes from the wacky and cartoonish theme, and ragdolls really add a lot to that. After years of having them turned off, I recently started using them again, and it was something I didn't realize I missed. Alright, let's go a bit further and change our DX level. Old Source games used DX8, but by the time TF2 launched, uh, they were already on DX9. But you can ask TF2 to use DX8 instead, and it will change the graphics a considerable amount. When I started playing, most people told me DX8 would give me better frame rate, and with the janky performance-oriented graphics configs at the time, it seemed to work. I honestly still prefer a lot of the stuff about DX8, like the shorter rocket trails and how certain transparent effects like medigum beams and teleporters are white. Visual clarity is arguably a lot better in DX8 besides the screen turning neon red when you get the bleed effect and how opaque rocket trails are. Our next change is my personal favorite, explosion effects. Using certain scripts, you can replace explosions with a bunch of different in-game particles. This is my favorite thing for visual clarity. Explosions are very large and really hurt the visibility of what is going on behind them, especially the lingering smoke. Playing with the smaller explosion effect that doesn't have the smoke particles can really help in a lot of hectic team fights or when playing as soldier or demo man and needing to see what is happening behind your explosion. These next three changes are completely up to preference, but it is really fun to try different things and see how it feels, see what you like best. Uh, crosshairs. TF2 is an in-game crosshair picker that is alright, and you can also change them with console commands. Uh, what people used to do is they would use a HUD crosshair, like a crosshair built into their HUD. Uh, but these were often very difficult to center, and you'd mess around with the size and offset to try to get it as close to center as possible, but it never really worked. However, people now use VTF crosshairs to replace TF2's default crosshair with their own file. Because uh, I've been talking about visual clarity in this video, I'm going to use a large crosshair with an outline. Now let's talk about custom HUDs. This has been made much easier over the years, and now more HUD has an in-game menu to change your HUD elements however you like. The third preference-based change is monitor resolution. Most modern games still let you use a stretched resolution, but it usually takes a little bit of trickery to get it working without the black bars. A lot of competitive TF2 players over the years have used a 4x3 resolution stretched Shut to full screen 16x9. The final change we're going to use is a little extreme and can only be done on NVIDIA graphics cards as far as I know. 
but it arguably gives a huge visual clarity boost. It's called LOD Bias Tweak, and it works by forcing a LOD that would normally only be used for textures that are very far away. To do this, you'll need a specific version of the program NVIDIA Inspector, and then you'll have to change the in-game settings to this. If you set the filter light maps and filter textures to zero, you get an extremely pixelated Minecraft effect. That still helps a lot with visual clarity, but it's genuinely hard to look at. Initially, this could be used on most games, but over the years, modern games have found ways to prevent this. It really makes everything look like Play-Doh, but it's way easier to spot enemies compared to the backdrops. All right, the final result of our ugly visual clarity config is this. It gives a lot of visual clarity, but at the cost of making the game look terrible. Again, one of the cool things about older games like TF2 is how much you can change the graphical settings and HUD elements and pretty much whatever you want. If you play this game a lot and haven't messed around with this stuff too much, I highly encourage you to go do so. Just ragdolls and view models alone can really change the way the game feels. Scared money don't make money.